In today's video, we're going to be learning how to create and save custom chart templates in Thinkorswim, making it easy for you to apply all your favorite chart settings and studies with just a few clicks. Now, if you're not entirely sure what it is I'm talking about when I say a chart template, I'm talking about all of this. Here you can see I've got six different charts with a bunch of different indicators and even some with different color settings for them. This is a template or a grid as it's called in Thinkorswim and it can be created by using the little grid icon up here in the upper right hand corner. There you can see a little menu with a bunch of different squares and if I were to click on that, we can actually see an even bigger menu with a bunch more squares right below that. Now each one of those squares is actually an additional chart that we could add to our Thinkorswim platform. So this is how we can actually add or remove charts. You can also see that right below that is actually a list of all of my templates that I've actually saved in the past. And that includes this one that I'm currently using, the six grid layout, but also the single futures layout, which is completely different than this one. If I were to click on that, you'll actually see that this one is only a single chart and it actually has a few different studies within here, even a little notional script up here to tell me how this futures contract moves. It also has a little active trader window over here on the right to allow me to quickly go in and out of this futures contract, but it is very different than the grid I was just using. And again, all of those templates that I've used, created, and saved can all be found in this little grid icon in the upper right hand corner, and by simply flipping it over to the grid that I wanted to use. So right here, if I wanted to go back to the six grid layout, by clicking on that, we go right back to it. But now that you know where those templates or grids get saved, let's go ahead and create a brand new one and then I'm going to save it to get a little bit of practice. In order to start fresh, I'm going to come back up here to the upper right hand corner and click on this menu icon. Then I'm going to hit the reset button down here below and that's going to reset this platform back to how you would see it the very first time you log in. In order to get started, I'll just throw a stock symbol right up here at the top. And in this case, I'll throw in Apple, AAPL. Now that we've got an actual chart in here to play with, let's go ahead and make a few adjustments. What I want to do first is change the overall appearance of the chart, because I'm not a huge fan of this grid in the background, these little gray lines. And I also don't like to see the little red option expiration lines right here as well. So to clean that up, let's come up here to the settings menu in the upper right hand corner. And to begin with, we're going to need to head to the time access tab. And this is going to allow us to remove those rollover lines as well as the expiration Friday lines. And once that's done, we can then come up here to the appearance tab. And if I were to come down here below and uncheck the grid, that'll get rid of those gray lines in the background. And before we actually save this, I'd also like my green candlesticks to be filled in as well. So I'm going to come up here and check mark this fill up box. And now that we're happy with all that in order to lock in those changes and actually see what it's going to look like, let's come down here below and hit the OK button. And now that I've cleaned up my chart, let's go ahead and add a few indicators that I want to use as well. So to do that, we'll need to come up here to the Edit Studies button up here at the very top. It looks like a little science beaker. Clicking on that will bring up the Edit Studies window where we can see all of the studies and indicators that I can load over here on the left-hand side. I'm going to come up here to the little search box at the very top and quickly add a few simple moving average lines by simply clicking and then hitting Add Selected two times. And I think I'll also add a MACD on here as well. So come on up here and add MACD. Go ahead and click on in the list below and hit Add Selected. Looking to the right, I can now see those brand new indicators that I just added to my chart. And if I wanted to edit any of those, like the simple moving average lines, I would simply come up here and hit this little gear icon. This settings menu will allow us to adjust how this study actually looks or how this indicator looks on our chart but also how we measure the indicator as well. So in this case, I want to flip this over to a 50 period moving average. And for the most part, I'm going to leave the appearance setting the same down here. And we'll just hit OK to lock that in. Coming up, I want to do the same thing to my second moving average line. And I'm going to adjust that to the 200 period moving average. And as for the appearance, to make sure that this one stands out, I'm going to adjust the color from this bluish color to a goldish color. To lock all of that in and save those changes, we'll just come over here and hit OK, and then hit OK one more time. 
And there we go, we've got a nice new chart with a few changes and everything looks good. But before I save this, I actually want to add another chart to the right of this one. So to add another chart, remember we always have to come up here to the grid icon in the upper right hand corner. Then come down below and actually click on the second box to the right of this one. That'll then add a brand new chart over here on the right hand side. And I actually want both of these charts to be the same stock ticker. So to link those together, we'll come over here to the linking button of the first chart. And let's just make this one lilac. Honestly, the color doesn't really matter. We just want them both to be the same. So now that we've got the lilac on the left one, let's link this one up to the same color, lilac. Now that they're linked, they've got the same symbol up here at the top. We've got Apple in both these boxes. But one of the big differences is I want this chart on the right to be a one minute chart. So I'm gonna adjust the time frame to one minute. And I'm also going to add an active trader window over here on the right so I can quickly go in or out of those positions. I just want to size this up a little bit better before I save it. Maybe give a little bit more room to this chart on the right and then zoom out a little bit. But I think that looks good. I've now got my one year one day chart over here on the left and then I've got my actually this is flipped back over to a five minute. Let me flip that over to one minute. So I've got the charts looking the way I like it and I've got an active trader over here on the right. Let's say I now wanted to save this. So I want to create a brand new template. And remember to do that, we need to come back up here to the grid icon in the upper right hand corner. And then down here below, we're going to find the button mark save grid as. We'll then need to give it a name that we want to save it as. In this case, I'll just name this two charts just to keep it simple. And then to save it, just hit save. But now that that's done, I now have the ability to quickly toggle between my multiple chart templates by simply using the grid icon in the upper right hand corner. I can then just find and click on the template that I want to go to. And as easy as that, I can change my entire setup. I can quickly go from my six chart setup back to my future setup if I now wanted to trade futures. Or if I wanted to look at my two chart setup where I've got a daily chart as well as a minute chart. I could again just come back up here to my grid and flip it over to my two charts layout. But clearly there is a lot you can do in here and I would really recommend you play with it a little bit to get the hang of it. Try and create a few different templates that you think you'll find useful and then go ahead and save them and just navigate back and forth and make sure you got the handle on this. I know it was a lot and we went through it pretty quick but it really does cover just about everything you need to know to create and save a chart template for yourself within here. There's definitely a lot I only cover briefly, so if you are looking to learn more, consider checking out this video next. You might find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you on the next one.